Hello and welcome to this week's Live Local and Loud with me, Kevin Gorn. On this week's show, I shall be chatting to the young Mr. Michael Vickers, local singer-songwriter. And we'll also be spinning lots of homegrown tunes by local bands. Hello, I hope you're all well and are having a great week. Right, let's kick this week's little show off with the very, very latest tune from Ali Flex and Feeling Me. the very latest banger from Ali Flex and Feeling Me. Of course, Ali Flex is a British musical rap artist of Bangladeshi origin, no less. Uh, If you want to check out his page, he's got some stunning videos and stuff to some of his music on his page and some tracks in, uh, well, presumably Bangladeshi. I know it's another another language anyway, not English. Um, So yeah, if you want to check his page out, it's Ali Flex Official. So great stuff from him. Okay, so now it's time for Fionn Rebecca and I hope she's worth it. you 
But I hope she's worth it to you I hope she's worth it to you Does all the things that I do Yes, I do Wraps her whole world around you I hope she's worth it Worth it, worth it No, I hope she's worth it to you Does all the things that I do Wraps her whole That was the wonderful Fionn Rebecca and I hope she's worth it. She's going to be performing next on Saturday the 17th of February at Watson's. It used to be the Vegan Bar, uh, now it's called Watson's, just down Granby Street um, opposite the Barley Mow-ish. So yeah, um, seventh Saturday the 17th of February and she's doing a night, she's hosting a night, Prohibition. I think she's hosting it, I'm not sure, she might just be performing it, one or the other. Uh, yeah, she was speaking about it here on this very show a couple of months ago. Uh, if you want to listen to that interview or any other interviews, check out the playlist on musicinleicester.co.uk. So that's Fionn Rebecca um, at Watson's on the 17th of February. Okay, so now it's time for another very new track, hot off the here or hot off the press from Comprehend. It's What Do You Know? What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Suppose you gained it all but lost your soul that is eternal. What have you gained? You've lost in this world and you've lost in the world to come. Had to come with a little something in 24 Dropped a couple tracks last year but I got plenty stored I'm still broke, it's so painful that I'm semi-poor I used to have Charlie with some angels, Demi more. I'm never claiming to be something I'm not Cause this is more than entertaining, I'm just taking my spot I did a couple funny skits promoting music I'm dropping A couple weeks past they copied so I know that they're watching You spent two years making your TikToks trying to force these plays I got sober six months, I hit 14k 100k on YouTube but I ain't just boasting You couldn't do the same if you had paid promo Ocean. I know you're mad, I see your veins exploding You trying to get the bag, I'm in my lane just coasting Cause I'm in love with rap, me and this game's eloping Had to take a step back and get my brain in motion Every day chasing your dreams What you know about? Never being fake for the streams What you know about? Always being true to yourself What you know about? Never selling you for the wealth What you know about? Sacrifice, pain and defeat What you know about? Trying to stay strong when you're weak You don't know about? Spending every penny on this You don't know about? Never exist, uh. False promises from people I trust If you can't deliver the goods, both just keep it a bug For 12 years I was steaming as f In 23 I got to work and now my streaming is up They're all believing it's luck Cause they don't wanna see the facts or the truth The fact is, I f relapsed off the booze But now I'm back sober my friend Already quit that sh once and let me show you again the industry keep asking me for happy songs Wrote a sad EP, sent it back, said you can have these ones Cause ain't nobody gotta tell me how to lap these dons I wanna be cause I need something to smoke like my back he's got I'm prepared to be God with this checklist You square stick to the block, Tetris I play with fire as a job, that's my death wish You're giving up your whole entire squad for some next chicks I'm overcome with that inhalers, got me gasping less I run my mouth cause I'm always trying to catch my breath They say actions speak louder than words That's why I hate to write captions but I'm proud of my work uh. 
got no bros Fell in to check I'm blessed with But I got messages telling me that I'm next up I want my worst to touch the kids like they're Westwood I'm giving it my best but I've never had the best luck I'll never sell my soul for the fame So I'ma be here till I'm old and in control of the game If they see you pure they take a hold of your brain But my integrity's worth more than the gold on your chain wow. What you know about? Every day chasing your dreams What you know about? Never being fake for the streams What you know about? Always being true to yourself What you know about? Never selling you for the wealth What you know about? Sacrifice pain and defeat What you know about? Trying to stay strong when you're weak You don't know about? Spending every penny on this You don't know about? Feeling like you never exist What you know about? Every day chasing your dreams What you know about? Never being fake for the streams What you know about? Always being true to yourself What you know about? Never selling you for the wealth What you know about? Sacrifice pain and defeat What you know about? Trying to stay strong when you're weak You don't know about? Spending every penny on this Marking the start of a wave of new music dropping this year, that was Comprehend and his very latest tune, What Do You Know? Okay, so now it's time for this week's little interview where I'm chatting to local singer-songwriter Michael Vickers. But first of all is his song, ADHD. thinking of I can't sit still I never will forget to eat and leave a mess constantly That was ADHD 
by the insanely talented and, dare I say it, rather charismatic singer-songwriter himself, Mr. Michael Vickers. Hello there, Michael. How the devil are you today? <laughs> I'm very well, thank you, mate. Cheers for the lovely compliments as well. <laughs> well, I do find, to be honest, whenever I've seen you live, which has been quite a few a few times, not quite a few, but a, a good few times, times, to be a fair, few yeah. times over the years, um, you, do, you do keep the end the audience entertained with your your little chatter between songs so that's you know and 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 they've always been amusing amusing so that's why i've said charismatic thank you very much i do my best um <laughs> to be honest i just get really excited and uh and yeah i just get in the moment and go for it excellent oh okay all right well thank you very much for chatting with me here today on my little show live local and loud now like most good stories let's start at the beginning um you must have been performing for at least over a decade now because i last saw what well, not i first saw you just over a decade ago where did your music making journey begin and how did you get into it, Michael? Well, well, well. So basically, <laughs> where do I start? Uh, so I guess like I was always obsessed with my older brother plays guitar and I was always obsessed with like music and his guitars and that. And he actually dropped a guitar on my head when I was one. Oh, wow. Um, and, and, and I think it knocked some uh, music stuff into me. Oh. Uh, my mum went over the moon, but yeah. Um, and then <laughs> I basically just, um, I, I, you know, at school, I struggled through school and that. And then uh, one of the teachers there was like kind of teaching some guitar and that. And um, I just started like, I, I just really got into it. I'd like, I'd really like growing up, growing up with ADHD, obviously, you know, the ADHD track. I grew up at a time when I guess it wasn't as spoken about. Um so music was kind of the first thing I really could focus on. Um, right. And I just ended up finding one of my brother's old guitar books and kind of teaching myself, really. Um, and it just happened, like, ridiculously quick. Um, so within a month, like, I was kind of, like, playing it, um, you know, primary school assemblies and things like that. And then, uh, then I realised it's what I wanted to do. I went, like, did it at school. I did a... Uh, a course of it at Leicester College. I went. I went to uni mm. and studied it. And um, and I think it went from like playing a guitar in my bedroom, aged eleven, to kind of then start in singing. And then when I was about fourteen, I started. You no, know, probably a bit younger, probably about twelve, thirteen. I started writing songs. And um, if you could dig them up now, which I'm not, I'm not sure you could unless there's the odd tape cassette knocking around. Wow. Um, they were probably pretty rubbish, to be honest. Um, but after after a lot of practice, yeah, I started kind of writing when I was about 16, 17. And I've gigged since then, really. Right. So, so yeah. if your brother not uh, dropped a guitar on your head, it, it must run in the family then, I guess, music. <clears throat> yeah, I think it does because um, <clears throat> my, uh, my older sister... Um, was a singer she had a great voice like a lot a lot better than mine to be honest oh, um yeah. and then my younger sister um she played flute and that and i put it down probably to um i mean my dad was always playing a lot of music and talking about music and the beatles and stuff but um my mum coming from an irish background uh there was always kind of musicians in the family so there was always like a mm. you know a guitar or a mouth organ or something getting passed around um you know, a family doing the pub and you, you were just, we were just, I guess, probably surrounded by it a bit. Um, so, yeah, that's how it kind of began, began I think. Yeah. Oh, OK. Now, you write that song a ADHD about your ADHD. So, uh, as you say, at a time where we people didn't really speak about things like ADHD, did, did you find it as a sort of release or a sort of therapy then? Yeah, because, I mean, like, I, for years, was trying to express all these feelings and i know a lot of people commented like your songs are very personal and all this and um to be honest like at school so i was kind of like misinformed i didn't know this at the time but that i'd kind of grown out of um having adhd so i like kind of came off the medication i was on and um and just being a bit of a class clown anyway i just remember sitting in a lesson telling myself not to shout something out, but inevitably shouting it out. Um, <laughs> and still feeling like I still had those like impulsive ways. And it wasn't until I got a bit older when I found out that you don't really grow out of ADHD. 
Uh, and that made a lot of sense in my adult life. Um, right. Some of the things I struggled with. And then, and then obviously now it's like quite an, an open thing. A lot of people talk about it. You know, there's as well as the being misdiagnosis, there's, there's a lot of people now recognising it as a thing, um, which is good, you know, because, you know, it is a thing. Um, yeah. But I think when I finally did a song about it, was probably only when I realised that yeah, this this ADHD thing is yeah, it can be bad, but actually it's it's a bit of a superpower because you know I guess it helps me be able to get on stage and be that kind of quirky person. It helps me, you know, one o'clock in the morning when I suddenly find the missing verse to a song, you know. So um, right. it, it was it was really good therapy. Plus having ADHD and being an attention seeker, I obviously wanted to talk about it. So. Right. Um, so yeah, so yeah, it has been a good therapy actually. Yeah, and I've actually had people I went to school with that uh, weren't diagnosed at the time, but have have done since, saying they really relate to it. So uh, that was an instant kind of win for me, you know. Yeah, is, is it important for you to make people feel something through your music? Then would you say? I think so. I don't know. I, I noticed it a lot of my songs are me. They're about me. They're about you know things but i think one it's my way of expressing myself but i think it's also because i actually think that when i'm not being egotistical a lot of my thoughts i think a lot of people feel the same way mm. so I'm, I'm kind of writing these songs about like you know i'm i'm not um i'm not some rap artist on a boat in the middle of dubai with loads of champagne and pretty people and you know what i mean I, I had a pretty normal upbringing you know so i think like the things I write about are very real to me and they're honest to me and I'm a very honest person. So I think it's just, it's just who I am. Do you know what I mean? Sort yeah. of thing. So, um, I think some, so, some yeah. people wear their heart on their sleeve, but I think you, as far as the music is concerned, you wear your heart in your music. Do you, yeah. do, do you think that makes you, does that make you feel vulnerable or, or do you find it a therapy then? Well, I mean, yeah, it does make me feel vulnerable at times. I've wrote songs about family members, losing family members, um, issues with depression, issues with alcohol, issues with everything. Um, and some of them, like, have been... There's a particular song on my, my latest album called The Secret People Know, which is about my relationship with alcohol. And uh, it was a really tough song to write. I remember being... Um, it was like, you know, tears smudging the ink on the page. It was, it was really hard to kind of come to terms with mm. um, with it. But I knew that, like, it needed saying, and it's a good story. And if you're going to do music, why not have a bit of that rock and roll side to it? That's fine. Do you know what I mean? Because, it, you know, if, if, any, if enough people hear it and they're saying they do or don't like it, then people are still hearing it. And as much as, like, it's therapy for me, like it, anyone who writes songs wants people to hear it and like it. So, um, so yeah, I try not to overthink it because I think I spiral between moods so often that when I write a song like that, if anyone's, you know, I don't think anyone's going to have a bad word to say about it. They might, they might think it's too open, but you know, that's, that's them. Do you know what I mean? So I, I don't feel too vulnerable. No, I, yeah. I you know, it feel all right about it. <laughs> okay. So now talking about, Wearing your heart, so, so obviously you recently had a, had your baby daughter. Congratulations! Um, Thank you very much, mate. What's, what's her name, by the way? So her name's Vienna. Vienna. Uh, oh. Yeah, little Vienna Rose Vickers, and um, and that's from me and me and Grace, my partner. We um, we on our first date, we were talking about our favourite songs, and uh, both of us said a song uh, called Vienna by Billy Joel. Oh, um, not Ultravox. And, uh, no, not the Ultravox one. Oh. No, um, no, that means nothing to me. Um, oh, sorry, bit of a dad joke there. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> it's just clicked. Quite... I just got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, so and it was one then where we look looking through names. And we were like, oh, it's really princessy and it's really nice, and you know she's going to grow up in a family of like you know a really love family. And uh, so yeah, so then obviously like that gave me a lot to write about as well. You know, yeah. and I was actually writing really happy songs for once, which was, oh, um, right. which was nice as well. I was, yeah, because I was going to ask. I mean, it could have gone one way or the other, or the other. Um, a, a, a new baby girl with with being a musician could have been a lot of hard work, and you've still got to do the music and look after the daughter. But you're more of, and you find her an inspiration then. So yeah, I mean, a it's a bit... effect on your on your music. 
Yeah, because I mean, I, I suppose I weren't worried about. I mean, you you panic obviously as soon as you know you're going to be a dad. You want to make sure you do the right things, but there was that part of me going, you know, is, is this going to mean less music? But actually, what I find is the time I do have where I'm not looking after her or. I've got a spare time. I've just got all these ideas that I've got 10 minutes to get on paper. And that's not a bad way for me to work. And mm. I'm, I'm like, you know, inevitably so much happier um, for her being here. And, and like I say, a lot of my songs have been about her and stuff like that. So, um, no, it's great. And plus, she's going to grow up watching her dad perform and hopefully she don't think it's sad and thinks I'm quite cool. <laughs> yeah. Right, so let's play your next song, Yellow Belly. What was uh, what was the inspiration behind that, Michael? So Yellow Belly was like, I went, uh, there's been a few times in my life where I'm quite impulsive. And I've, you know, I, I went, like I say, I do wear my heart my sleeve, I wear my heart my songs. And there was a couple of moments in my life where I was involved in maybe confrontation or things like that. And I kind of took a back seat and tried to stay calm. And then felt angry at myself because I think things would have been better to tell certain people at times that they were being a knobhead. I don't know how else I can say that. You might have to bleep that out. But, like, um, it's basically a song about kind of how at times when you don't react in a way you want to, but then you dwell on it, uh, mm. even though dwelling on something is pointless because you've got more information than you had when it happened, you've relived it, all this. Um, but it's that thing of like trying to kind of resolve something and be a nice person for people that don't deserve that. And 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 the idea of it, like so the, the chorus of I'm a yellow bellied, insignificant, wet white runaway. Um, this song came from like a melody line I'd wrote ages ago. Um and those words just, I literally sang it and I was like, yeah, that'll do actually. Like, I think that, that, them lyrics over that melody line work. And, and it's more kind of like an angry song, but a song that I sing because ever since I wrote that song, dwelling back on those things doesn't matter as much because I've kind of got the song where I've said how I feel. So I'm at peace with it, really. Oh. Um, so it's quite a complicated one, really. I guess, I guess my point is, is that like it's a song where I'm putting myself down. Um, but justifying why I did and why I didn't do what would have been the heroic thing to do or, 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 or however you put it, really, you know. That's, um, it's that's probably a bit your, like... That's why I love your shows, because you say all this during the show, don't you, before you introduce it, before you play each, each song. Yeah, I do. Yeah, 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 I do, yeah. Right. Okay, um, with, without any further ado, let's play it. So here's Yellow Belly by the fabulous Michael Vickers. I'm a yellow bellied, insignificant, wet white run away. No, I can't make today. I should have told her how I felt instead of treading on eggshells and acting lame. I could have had a guess I never should have had that bifter after so much jail I thought that being in the moment's in the moment And not looking back after the event But I'm a yellow belly in Controlling all my anger for the first time I just make it go away I thought not lashing out and keeping cool and hanging back Could make me the bigger man But I should have punched him or done something But I did nothing and feel no better I'm a yellow bellied insignificant wet white run away. No, I can't make today. 
That was Yellow Belly by the insanely talented and, dare I say it again, rather charismatic singer-songwriter himself, Mr. Michael Vickers. So, Michael, um, yeah, as I said, I find your shows very, very entertaining because you give us a good description, a heartfelt description um, about about what's behind the inspiration behind each of your songs, which is brilliant. Um, but I see you're doing a, a new a night at the Western open mic night. Um, so tell us about that. Yeah, no, no, that's Sam. And thank you again for your nice comments. Yeah. So basically, I um, I've, obviously the out the acoustic album I released last year, I did a, um, a launch night at a place called, well, at the Western. It's called Upstairs yeah. at the Western. And uh, I don't know if you know the Western pub, it's between kind of Bead Park and Brawny Gate um i do and... I know it well yeah 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 um just off narborough um, road that's right yeah yeah that's right yeah um and it's basically i i, I had the idea of because i had done an acoustic album i didn't want to just kind of play it at a pub before and again it's probably pretty egotistical i wanted to kind of get people in a, a theater like room shut them all up <laughs> and talk <laughs> about myself and play my songs excellent basically. lock the doors yeah yeah, so I, I did I did a gig there and it was a really lovely thing because people can sit in there and they can literally they watch it. So it's more like a show rather yeah. than a gig where you might get spoken over and things like that. Does it because it's it's a theatre, isn't it? So does it is it laid yeah. out like a theatre with a proper stage and the seating and all the rest of that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So wow. like the main the main thing you notice is that you've got to almost look up. Because yeah. if you look straight ahead to a lot of people, it looks like you're closing your eyes and, and things like that. So it was a real, like, we got, we got like, my lyrics on a projector behind there. Um, it, you know, we made a real show of it. But I, I had a moment where I spoke to the crowd and told them how much it meant that they'd all stuck around and not left. And I realised as I was doing this, that some bloke literally left the oh. theatre. <laughs> probably probably just to go to the toilet, to be fair. But it was at the exact moment as I was, like, praising everyone. Oh, um, but yeah. So it was a bit embarrassing. Um, if you if you watch the video on YouTube, you'll see my response and know why I can't say it on the radio. Um, but basically, yeah. So so what what I found that it was a, a really <laughs> a, a really lovely group of people. Um, and and I, I was I was basically asked to to run an acoustic night, Montflair, um, where I could put on acoustic acts. And the idea is that. They wanted a, a particular theme, so it was like, okay, well, let's do new up and coming acts. I haven't done many gigs because, um, you know, a gig there you can record it, even if it's just on your phone. Um, everything will go on the Western website. You can give the bio. You know, it's quite a professional thing, and it's quite a good opportunity for a lot of new coming artists, sort of thing. That was the idea, um, and because there's been a lack of kind of uh, female artists and, and non-binary artists as well um that's something also we want to look at is promoting um them artists so again like any artists that hear this that want to give it a go they can you know message me in whatever way on social media um and it's just a kind of of way of just putting on a good night really once a month on a friday night where 
you get to see someone new, you know. So I'm kind of picking out the acts. Mm. Um because uh, I'm obviously I'm shooting myself in the foot because I'm picking acts that are a lot better singers than me, you know. Like, Ooh, you know, there's, wow. there's no, <laughs> there's no, there's no like ego thing. It's just like I just think it's a really nice thing to do. And um, the people at the Western, it's all non for profit, and they're just they're lovely people. And again, I think it's just about meeting more musicians and and just just seeing the value of, of musicianship rather yeah. than you know because it's hard. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, you. You sold a dream as a kid, and then you realise how tough it can be. And I just think, like, as much as I was given a lot of great opportunities, particularly by people like Kev Holyland at the um, at the shed and things like that. And I just like now I'm. I mean, I'm only thirty one, but you know, I'm I'm not in the young category anymore. I feel it's nice to kind of give people that chance that I'd have loved as a, 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 you know as a youngster, you know. So so that's yeah. the main idea, really. And like I say, if people want to. Um, hearing this want to apply of course get me on michael vickers on any of my socials um and that's going to run for basically about four or five months All right. um and it, it's weekly cul- is it? culminate so that that's that's monthly so it's going to be monthly. two or three acts per month um and the idea is that you know all acts get a kind of good 25 to 30 minutes set mm-hmm. um and that's that and then that's going to culminate with um with my second album launch because I'm just going to do an acoustic album every year because, you know, why not? Wow. Throw stuff at a wall and see what sticks, you know. That's, that's it. Um, I mean, you've probably got the material, haven't you? I'm guessing you're a you're a prolific <laughs> songwriter over the years. I, I'm not going to lie, there's loads there that like, I want to get out. So, mm. um, but thank you. No, but um, so, so, and then, and then obviously we'll see if, if that, if that goes down well and there's a way of um, redoing it again, then that'd be great. But, um, but yeah, it's just a basic thing for like kind of new upcoming artists, new artists, maybe people not from Leicester that have just came to Leicester and they're trying to do their thing in Leicester. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just a, it's just a thing we're trying to do, really. That's it, and it does it does sound like quite a special evening because I, I I do like the Western. I mean, it's 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 a good pub in general, with really nice ambience to it. Um, but I've not been upstairs to the theatre bit, so that sounds quite special. That is. So, and the first one is actually tomorrow. As this goes, as the show goes out, it's actually tomorrow, isn't it? Friday, the second of February. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, and tickets you can get tickets online through upstairs at the Western um, on their website, or you can get them on the door. Uh, I think there's still a few going on the door. We're looking good for tickets, but I think there's still a few going. So, um, so yeah, and and that's kind of what it is, you know. And who have you got on uh, on your first show then? So we've got a guy called Joshua Hartshorn, who I actually gigged with at the Cookie, um, I think it was at the start of December. Um, I did a kind of set at the Cookie, um, and I caught caught the end of his set, and uh, he's, he's just a lovely guy and, mm. and a good musician, you know, um, which is, you know, you, you obviously want good musicians, but being a nice guy, I, I you know, I always like that, you know, like, yeah. you know, uh, you know, you work with someone good. And then uh, the next person we've got on is um, she's called now and that's N-O-U-R. Uh, Noor. She's on Instagram and basic no. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I just I checked out stuff. I was like, this, yeah, this is great. Uh, she came recommended as well. And um, and yeah, they're both looking forward to it. And they both seem like lovely people. And I think they're both going to smash it. So that sounds excellent. Um, and the yeah. night's going to finish off with uh, you doing a little set. Is that right? Yeah. So I kind of come on and explain awkwardly what the night's about. And you uh... never be awkward. <laughs> Don't believe that. Yeah, I'll have a few things to say. Um... You just take over the show like you're doing now. I mean, um... <laughs> you're not far off, mate. No. So, I, so I'll so I'll introduce them. I do a couple of songs introduce them um and and that was start at seven and obviously because it's like in a theater it is kind of prompt mm. like if there's anything i've learned is it theater people are the real deal it's like if you're on at seven you're on at seven it's not like you know go on when you want it's no. you know um it's and, then, like and gig, then yeah gig time no 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 it's like proper stuff oh. um but yeah and and then like and then i'll end the, the show with a few uh songs and then Hopefully, ideally, we all have a good time downstairs in the bar and, uh, you know, it's just a lovely Friday night, really. Excellent. Is there a dress code or um, or am I all right as I am? 
You're absolutely fine as you are, mate. Um, have you got any new music coming up you'd like to talk about? We've got five minutes left. Yeah, so basically I've got what one of the songs off my acoustic album was called Just Because, and it was my kind of song about mental health in, in the way that, like, fr from an outside of observing other people, you know, yeah. um, and drawing on my own experiences. It's called Just Because, and I basically when I did the album, um, which I did with uh, a bloke called Michael Tedstone, who's uh, a very good songwriter in Leicester. He does a lot of um, stuff for TV and film. I've worked with him on a few things. Um, and a guy called Andy Jenkinson, who who taught me at Leicester College and is a wizard. He's a very intelligent man. Um, I always feel well out of my depth when I'm with him. Um, oh. and And he basically made a string quartet version um of this song so that's going to be coming out wow um that's going to be coming out soon i've got a couple of singles to put out and obviously i'll be i'll be aiming for a, another acoustic album uh this year but also most excitingly for me is that um me and my band michael vickers and the bad thing are going to finally be releasing um some stuff we've been doing and that's a real kind of diy garage bandy you know, no nonsense kind of. Oh, I can't wait for it. They, uh, they're, they're great lads, and we have a we have a lot of fun in the studio. So, um, so there's loads coming up, basically, mate. I'm never, uh, I'm never really not busy. I just get into it too much. So. Excellent. That sounds awesome to me. Um, so before <laughs> we sign off, so how can people keep in touch with you, Michael? Yeah. So basically, it's Michael Vickers Music on um, Instagram, uh, Facebook youtube um twitter's michael vickers underscore because apparently someone had michael vickers music oh. um and i've recently started a tiktok page um and i think that's just michael vickers music as well but um yeah i'm on all the socials and that and uh and again if people do want to like kind of apply to play um this michael vickers new acoustic night at the western um, they can hit me up on any of them and i'll get back to them that's brilliant. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for this week's little chat, Michael. It's been great catching <laughs> up you. with you. And finally, we're going to sign off with your song, I Already Love You. How? Uh, what was the inspiration behind this? Um, so, yeah, no, thank you for having me, mate. It means a lot, wow. man. Um, my, my inspiration for this was um, obviously just over a year or so ago, I, I, I found that I was going to be a dad. It was an amazing moment. I didn't feel as scared as I probably should have, but, it, it, you know, it was just an unbelievable moment. And I, I just got to thinking about how life would be like as a dad. And this one literally just, it just wrote itself. Um, and I'm just really happy with it. I think it's it's nice, it's happy, it's cute. Um, and it's about my daughter and, um, and I just adore her. So, um, yeah, it's called I Already Love You. And, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Can't say fairer than that. Thank you very much, Michael. Here's I Already you, Love You Dad. by Michael Vickers. I already love you Till we do I already love you From the day your mother told me From the moment that I knew you Always have and always will I can't wait to teach you All the things I've learned so far Which may be less than others learn But your perfectness will melt my heart I can't wait to meet you The waiting's way too hard And I won't always get it right Deserve you. I'll let no one ever hurt you. I'd go to the edge of the earth. Cause I already love you, and that's not something I'll take lightly. And you may well be just like me, so I'll raise a bar for you in return. In night time, I can read to you, see so your mum can get some rest. 
Show me so sleep, but having you will be priceless. Still can't quite believe it's true. I can take my happiness, and I won't be unimpressed when you make our house a mess. You're a blessing to us both when we needed you the most, and we put it to the universe. We've got so much love for you, it hurts. You kick us harder every day. Every day they're more intense. It's pretty hard to comprehend. It doesn't really make much sense. But now our two becomes a three, completes our little family. And you'll be here in a few more weeks. I already love you. I could never live without you. I will always be around you. Should you need a hand to hold, 'cause I already love you, and so does everybody else. I don't care about myself no more. Just think about you both. That was me chatting to the wonderful local singer-songwriter himself, Mr. Michael Vickers. Okay, so now it's time um, for a bit of an oldie from a band that unfortunately disbanded a couple of weeks ago. It's Gazelle and Lady Blue Sky. Can't stop. 
that was the wonderful Gazelle and Lady Blue Sky. As I said earlier, unfortunately, they've disbanded. They are no longer with us. However, you can see uh, the lead singer, Ryan Dunn. He's performing this Sunday at uh, Watson's um, again. So it's the same Watson's that Fionn was playing at. And he's playing this Sunday, 4th of February. Uh, he's doing an acoustic set. And there's also a DJ, DJ set by soul defect and that's from 2 p.m in the afternoon to 10 p.m and apparently there's 241 on cocktails so there you go that's ryan dunn lead singer of gazelle this sunday 4th of february at watson's it used to be the vegan bar down granby street <laughs> And that brings us to the end of another live local and loud with me, Kevin Gorn. I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget, if you want to see what gigs are going down in Leicestershire, check out our very handy gig guide in musicinleicester.co.uk. Also, don't forget, uh, all the musicians I've played on this week's show have been interviewed on this very show. Um, over the last few months so if you want to hear those again then you can check out our handy playlist which is also on www.musicinleicester.co.uk so do have a great week and i shall look forward to seeing you here hermitage fm next thursday at five o'clock